Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this scenario. You're an organizer for a concert venue. You know that this artist who puts on a pretty good show wants to do a show in your city. There are about three or four concert venues in the city, and they make it clear that they don't care where they play in the city. They're going to whichever venue bids the highest. So you talk with your team, you weigh the pros and cons, you establish a set price point, and then you get into an intense bidding war for the rights to host this concert. You get the concert after dropping a fair amount of money, and in your eyes, it's worth it. The risk is worth the reward. And then, the day of the concert, Taylor Swift comes out and says, Surprise! I'm doing a show in this city tonight. And by the way, Taylor Swift would have chosen your venue had you not been booked already with that prior concert. Well now, you're completely screwed, right? You drop all this money, something came up at the last minute that you definitely did not see coming, and that could absolutely take away from the audience and the interest in your show. And now, this gamble might not be worth it, especially since you could have gone in the way more popular event for free. Well, that's sort of what happened in 1991 with this scheme right here and a CBS affiliate in Washington, D.C., known as WUSA. On October 27, 1991, WUSA bid a high amount of money to broadcast the game locally between Washington and New York. It seemed like a smart and foolproof plan. And then, a giant wrench was thrown into their plans when another sporting event was scheduled for that same night and would have been on CBS had it not been for the earlier decision by WUSA. As for how it worked out, well, the results may surprise you. Because this is the story behind the bizarre conflict between the NFL, Sunday Night Football, and the 1991 World Series. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this scheme, why WUSA was even televising the game in the first place, and what was happening in the baseball world that conflicted with this battle. It's October 27, 1991. It's week 9 of the NFL season. And as we hit the halfway point of the year, we've got a battle on our hands in the NFC East between New York and Washington. This is a big game for a few reasons. Number one, the rivalry between Washington and New York is one of the biggest in the league. And these were two fierce divisional rivals, especially around this time, when New York and Washington consistently ranked among the top teams in football. But on the field and in the standings, this was a big game too. Washington was 7-0 and was playing some unbelievable football. They seemed like the best team in the league, boasting the second best offense with 231 points scored or just under 29 points per game and the second best defense with 82 points allowed or just over 10 points per game. Their point differential of plus 149 was head and shoulders above everyone else, as no other team in football had a point differential in triple digits. However, they didn't have a lot of room for error in their pursuit of perfection, especially since they were not the only undefeated team in the NFC, seeing as the New Orleans Saints were 7-0. So if they wanted to keep the number one seed and wanted to have the playoffs run through RFK Stadium, they needed to keep up the momentum. As for the Giants, the defending Super Bowl champions, they enter this one at 4-3, currently holding on to the number 6 seed in the playoffs. A win here, and they're in a pretty good spot at the halfway point. A loss here though, and not only is a chance at repeating as NFC East champions completely dead in the water, but they put themselves in quite the log jam with a few other teams hovering around that 3-4 and four win mark for the final playoff spot. It was a big game for both of these teams, and it was going to be under the lights on ESPN 
on Sunday Night Football in front of a national television audience. Now, as you probably know, ESPN is a cable channel, which means that not everyone has access to it. The NFL has a rule, and still has said rule today, that says that if a game is on cable, or is on a streaming service, that the game must be shown on over-the-air local television if the local team is playing in the game, provided that it's not blacked out. As an example, if the Philadelphia Eagles are playing a game on ESPN, in Philadelphia, the game must also be shown on a channel that you can get simply by purchasing an antenna. It's a smart rule, and it's a rule that allows people to follow their favorite team without having to pay anything. And for the game that you've been watching this whole time, this meant that in the DC area, since their local team was playing in the game, that this game had to be shown by some local station. Let the bidding commence. In the end, the winning station for this game was this station right here, the CBS affiliate, otherwise known as WUSA. It was a fairly intense bidding war, especially since Washington was expected to be a pretty big team in 1991, and especially since the team is super popular and is playing a rivalry game. But when all was said and done, WUSA paid $500,000 for the rights for the ski. They paid half a million dollars, or over $1.1 million in today's money, to televise the Washington New York game on Sunday Night Football for the DC market, which was the seventh largest media market in the country. A million dollars is not chum change by any means, especially because not only does this mean you're airing this game, but you're preempting your Sunday night television lineup, including Murder She Wrote, one of the top programs in the Nielsen ratings and the top program on Sunday nights outside of 60 Minutes. But it was a calculated gamble that they were willing to take. They thought they could make the money back with advertising dollars and with high ratings. And they thought that this would be the case, because nothing else was possibly going to happen on Sunday night that could interfere with this football game. And so it's live from the Metrodome. It's Game 7 of the World Series. The Atlanta Braves and the Minnesota Twins here on CBS Sports. Oh crap! There's baseball on! Yet, as it turns out, the World Series between the Atlanta Braves and Minnesota Twins went to seven games. Obviously, at the start of the season, you can't predict how many games are going to be in the World Series. It's anywhere from four to seven. And more often than not, it's not going the distance. Heck, the previous three years, there were only 13 combined games played in the series, one above the minimum, with the 1988 edition going five games, and the last two editions being four game sweeps, with the 1989 series won by the Oakland Athletics, and the 1990 series won by the Cincinnati Reds. The last 15 years, only five times have the World Series gone seven games. So while obviously not a lot, the odds were very high in your favor that the World Series was not going to go seven, and Sunday night would be completely unoccupied when it came to baseball. But in 1991, the bad news for WUSA was that the World Series was one of the all-time classics. Four of the first six games came right down to the bitter end, being decided by just one run. Two of the games went into extra innings, including Game 3, which went 12 innings despite a furious comeback by the Twins in the later innings, and Game 6, where the Twins needed to win to keep the series alive, and they did so after Kirby Puckett had a walk-off home run, immortalized by the great Jack Buck with one of the greatest calls of all time. And because of that Game 6 walk-off shot, there would be a seventh game of the World Series taking place on Sunday night, going up directly against the Washington-New York football game. By itself, that's not a huge deal, and it's not a noteworthy story. We've seen some competition between the NFL and Major League Baseball before. But throwing an added wrinkle into this was the fact that the network televising the World Series that year was, you guessed it, CBS. WUSA, the CBS affiliate, would have had a high ratings game with the World Series and Game 7, since at that point, Game 7 is a national event of high significance and importance. And they obviously would not have had to pay anything for that game. It's going to every CBS station. And now, 
they just blew over $1 million in today's money to air a game that might draw less than the World Series and is obviously not as big, since a regular season game pales in comparison to the winner-take-all game of the World Series. On the surface, this seemed like it was going to be $1 million or so down the drain for WUSA, with the series being moved in Washington to WDCA, an independent station. As for WUSA's reaction, obviously, they would not have spent all that money on playing second fiddle when they could have played first fiddle for no extra cost. If they had known that the World Series was going to go 7, they obviously would not have been on the football game. As Marty Apple, a spokesman for another station, WPIX, an independent station which had the rights to New York to show the football game, said on this. However, Hank Yagi, the boss over at WUSA, was oddly confident that this wouldn't be an issue. Even though there was definitely going to be some overlap, and even though there were definitely going to be fewer casuals watching the football game over the baseball game, he was confident that his station would come out on top by airing the local team, and that he didn't just throw his money down the drain, saying, I have no doubt football will win out in Washington. And it's an interesting little dilemma. On one hand, if the World Series game is a blowout, and people are staying up anyway to watch sports, they might flip on the football game, and more casual fans will watch them before, because the casual fans who wouldn't have previously watched the football game are now willing to watch any sporting event. On the other hand, if the football game, which starts an hour before the World Series, is a blowout, then you might be completely screwed, because people will flip the game off, and the ratings will take. Plus, when Game 7 of the 1986 World Series went up against the Monday Night Football game, in just about every single market, the World Series won out. Either way, this was going to be a fascinating competition to watch unfold. Did WUSA blow $1 million when they didn't have to? Well, as it turns out, Yagi's confidence paid off. He said that this was not a waste of a million and that even though he wouldn't have done it if he knew about the World Series going seven games, that football was going to win out. He knew his market. He had faith in his market. And sure enough, he was right. When the numbers came in, WDCA, as in Channel 20, the independent station that got the World Series because WUSA was busy with football, got a 12 rating and an 18 share. This meant that 12% of all households in the D.C. area had Game 7 of the World Series on. And of the households that were watching TV in the D.C. area at the time, 18% of them were watching the World Series. Nielsen said that 218,388 households in D.C. watched Game 7. So if you do the math, there are somewhere in the ballpark of 1.8 million households in D.C. The football game between Washington and New York that grew a 37 rating, more than tripling the World Series. This meant just under 700,000 households in the area were watching the football game. And of all the TVs in use in D.C., 51% of them, or more than half, had the football game on. If you do some math, about 1.2 million households in D.C. were watching TV that night, and half of them had the football game on, while a fifth of them had the baseball game on. So even though WUSA lost seven figures adjusted for inflation, by getting the rights to this game which was second fiddle everywhere else in the country, it actually paid off for them. And sports fans in the area were happy regardless. Game 7 went 10 innings, and Washington won against New York, as you've been able to tell from these highlights the whole time. So it was a great night of sports all around, especially if you were in the nation's capital. Oddly enough, this is not the first time I've done a video about a broadcasting controversy and a conflict involving New York and Washington going up against Game 7 of the World Series. Last year, I did a video about the time that they played against each other in 1986 at the same time as Game 7 of the World Series between the New York Mets and the Boston Red Sox. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But the fact that five years later, it not only happened again, but with the same two teams 
in front of a primetime audience? They aren't kidding when they say history repeats itself. This was a move that absolutely could have backfired for WUSA. This was a gamble that could have been a disaster by paying $1 million in today's money for a game that produces worse ratings than the game you were originally scheduled to show. But it actually paid off. And even though the full financial details weren't released, based on the ratings, my guess is that WUSA made more money showing this game, even with the initial setback getting the rights to the game, than they would have made showing Game 7 of the World Series for no additional cost. Because after it was clear that there would be a seventh game of the series going up against the all-important Sunday Night Football game, Hank Yagi was not concerned. He told sports fans in the area, We know you like football and your local team more than baseball. And because of that, we'll see you tomorrow night. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.